many times we think that wealth is about money, but true wealth and power lies in who you know yourself to be and how you operate as yourself. We are back with another episode of The Journey to More. And today we're talking about the wealth and power of identity. Now, you know me, I am the entrepreneur's attorney and business strategist. And though I am a business strategist and an attorney, I'm really concerned about the entrepreneurial minds. Those of us that are going after more in life, those of us that want to be more, those that want to do more, and those that want to have more. And it takes us really developing that entrepreneurial mind. So So as such, I try and bring you only the best, right? And so today we have Coach Bianca here, a passionate and God-fearing identity coach. Somebody's like, what is an identity coach? (laughs) Stay tuned. She's on a mission to help all God's children who are struggling with their identity due to constant rejection, loneliness, negative mindsets, you name it. Whatever that thing is, is keeping you from showing up in your God-fearing identity. That's what she helps you to do. She's here to serve everyone so that they can walk in the freedom and authority and the power of Jesus Christ and to help them have a healthy foundation while pursuing their God-given calling. So she's here to teach us about the power and the wealth. So, you know, a lot of times when we get to a place where we're able to teach people about things, it's because of what we've gone through and what we've experienced. So talk to me about your life and how you got to this place. Uh, It was a lot. (laughs) Just the journey um, of just... God walking with me and pruning and isolation and just really removing things that was planted in me since I was born um, that the enemy tried to just kill and destroy me with. God really turned everything around for his glory and just be able to help people see different, um, their different, see different perspectives of things that happen in their life. Because so many people go around, oh, why did I go through this? Why did I go through this? It's like, no, it's, it's about your mindset. You have to flip your mindset to see, okay, God, I went through this, but I know this is not what your words say about this situation. So I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to flip my mindset and use the words to activate whatever you have for me. Because I know that the enemy uses this for my bad, but I know you are going to use this for my good. If I'm going to teach somebody, if I have a work for somebody, if I'm just like, you know, just like, no, th- it's just a mindset thing and like so many people be stuck in the negativity of why 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 but it's like no guy my curiosity it's really about curiosity to, curiosity to like you just have a spark and just want to know why and not why this happened but no like why did this happen something good had to come throughout to this and yeah <laughs> So it's interesting that you say that. I think about all of the different types of listeners here and where they could be in different seasons of their lives. And they may be mismanaging that season Mm -hmm. because they have the wrong lens about that season. And so one of the things, a few of the things that you mentioned were seasons where you're going through some pruning. So pruning typically means that there is some type of internal or external pain that you are experiencing so that you can shed the dead weight, so that you can shed the dead habits, so that you can shed um, the things that cannot go with you in your future, the things that cannot uh, take you to your next level. Then you also mentioned isolation. Y'all, let me tell you, (laughs) let me tell you, let me tell you, because it is not easy to walk through these things. It is not easy to sit in these moments, but these are the moments that get you to the next glory, the next level of your identity, because who you thought you were when you walk into a situation, God may be trying to shift you and push you into a different version of you. And so that isolation is for him to really fine tune your hearing for him to make sure that you have the right voices in your life and for you to be able to shut out the wrong voices. I recently did something where I was talking to my community of business owners around, yes, I am here as your coach. Yes, I'm here to guide you. Yes, I'm here to tell you about industry standards. However, 
the other piece around this is that we are faith filled entrepreneurs and God is the CEO of our life. And so you always have to take the good advice that I'm giving you and make sure it aligns with God's advice for your life. And so when you start to operate in that realm, you will see a different level of outcomes and results. And so many times we think about wealth as being money and assets, but there is wealth that's defined by God that has nothing to do with a financial means. And so Bianca, like where have you found wealth outside of finances in your life? Um, I can really say two things like that's I just hear just clearly is joy and wisdom that I done went through so much <laughs> in just one year um, with God and just like having to quit my job and I, I didn't have finances. I, I used to be the one to give, give, give. Now I'm like, Lord, <laughs> what's, what's, what's really going on? And so like, just to, re- just to remember that God is the provider of everything. Like in Matthew 6, 26, it talks about the birds and the ants and how they don't worry about what they're going to eat. They people don't worry about what they're going to wear and think God provides all that. And so just to remember that it's like, okay, my joy. Cause we, I know so many people, I know I used to think like my joy was in what I can buy or um, what I can go out and do just like material things. But it's like when God took out the material things and he just showed me him and his word and myself. And it's like, no, if I have God, I have outstanding joy, like just to be able just to look, read his word or just to worship him and just to walk and jump for him. It's like, no, this is joy. The the fact that I got to wake up another day, it's like, God, you are amazing. That's why I continue to smile every day because your joy that you just rain upon us, that you just hug us with just, oh my goodness, it's joy. And then wisdom. Ho, oh, it's <laughs> just to be able to know how to show up in this world and know, like, just know how to show up in this world of who you are and what the word says. And just the living word is literally it's the book of life. And so, so much wisdom is in here and that you just know that God said, if you don't, ask, if you don't, you don't have it because you didn't ask. So if you ask for that wisdom, if you ask God how to show up in this room, how to show up in this business, how to, you know, handle people that's this way and that way, like, he literally gives it to you. So it's just like, that's, God is good. (laughs) Listen, I agree with you. God is good. God is great. We thank him for his grace. I think that was the prayer we used to say in school. I want to tap into this, the power of your identity Mm -hmm. and this piece around power. One of the things you said is like, God is your source. And you all are listening to a wise young woman. She's actually in college. So like you may be getting gems like what? So for her to walk with this level of knowledge and understanding at such a young age, we can just only imagine what's going to come from her later on in life. Right. And so this piece around the source, one of the things that I believe God does is when he's ready to shift you to another area, he will allow there to be some type of financial strain in your life. And many times people think that financial strain is the enemy. But Mm. I want to offer to you, what if that financial strain is for God to teach you to trust him and that he is your source? And when you understand that he is your source, that is when you really start to have power in your life. That is when you start to really have power over the enemy. Right. And so as a business owner, one of the things that I know is like, oh, okay, well, he pays me. I, I know my paycheck is coming because God pays me because he's my source, right? He's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. He's never going to let me down. However, did I start off that way? Absolutely not. But that also gives me a certain power over the enemy for it to be like, well, I don't have any calls scheduled this week. What am I going to do? You could be putting my name in somebody's spirit right now. I probably don't have to do anything. 
Right. All I need to do is sit and be in the will of God and really lean into that wisdom piece. Right. And so she's defined portions of wealth as joy and wisdom. And I think about wisdom. The Bible says that he gives it freely. But one of the things Bianca pointed out for us is that we need to ask for wisdom in every situation. In all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. And so if you are asking him for wisdom, everything done with your family, but you're not asking him for wisdom and finances, what are you doing, right? If you're asking him for wisdom and X, Y, Z, but you're not asking him for wisdom on how to parent, what are you doing? You're not tapping into that level of wealth. You're not tapping into um, the power which is available to you if you understand your source, right? And getting your identity from the word. Who Good does word. God say that you are? Who? What does God say that you can have? And so when you start to lean into that, I mean, I had a dream. It wasn't real life. <laughs> can I tell you about the dream? It wasn't Wait. real life. But I just felt it so strongly. Like it was like one of these like demonic gangsters trying to come up against me. Mm. And so I was like, do you, I don't have the power of God in me. Like, I have the power of God in me. Get out. I'm not playing with you. And so it was interesting. Like I literally extracted me, this strong, big old man, like get out of my house get out of my house. And I okay. exercise the power of God. But it was because one, I knew my identity and two, I believed in yes. my source. I knew it was nothing coming from me, but it was everything coming from him. Yes. And so you think about where does not having an identity, where do you see that like harming people in life or not allowing them to really live out their life? I want to say not knowing your identity and where it's like harming you is probably your thoughts, like the thoughts that come through our minds. So much thoughts, like either it's because it's, we have so many voices. You have you hear God's voice, your voice, or the enemy voices, and every voice, every thought that is comes in your head, it's not it's not from you. And so if you don't know that and you don't know the word of God, it's like you just take in anything that's coming your way. And then next thing you notice, you find yourself feeling lonely or rejected or depression is because you have accepted thoughts that you wasn't supposed to keep in. But we're supposed to kept, we're supposed to hold every thought and put it against the word of God. And if you don't know that, it's you just sitting in it. And then once you sit in it, you just continue to like nurture it and then it just come mature and it's just like, how we're now how I'm supposed to get out of this. So that's why it's so important to know who you are, who child you belong to, and what does the word say, but also not what it says, but do you believe what it says about you? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think that we've ever had this understanding about ourselves, but we should probably start to move into a space where we understand that we are former farmers and a farmer, or we could do be a gardener or a planter, whatever it is, you get the gist. Yeah. Um, we are constantly dealing with seed and we constantly have to figure out which seeds are good, which mm -hmm. seeds need to be thrown away. And we need to figure out, so based on after we decipher which seeds are good and which need to be thrown away, then we actually have to plant the seed and allow for there to be a maturation of the seed in order for us to even see some sort of harvest. And I believe that this is not only for, you know, us as we walk with God, it's for every area of our lives, especially as we start to think about the fact that we are people where a lot of times we want things done immediately. We want things done this way. But if we know that we were given seed, that means we have to nourish it and nurture it to a point of maturation. And I, I, I started to think about this with my business group and just walking them through really understanding what it means to be an entrepreneur, what it means to be a CEO, 
that every time you are talking to a client, a potential client, you are putting seed in the ground, right? And sometimes it's like, I want this sale immediately. Mm. What type of seed are you putting in the ground? Even if we think about, you know, how you really talked about our thoughts, what what type of seed are you putting in your ground? And so if you don't like the harvest of you, you have to go and check your seed. Right. And checking your seed is checking your thoughts. Then you, if you're checking your thoughts, you have to check your environment. Mm. Like what is feeding you? What are you digesting? Because if you're not tapping into that piece, you're missing out on the opportunity actually to have a harvest. But wait, oh, you have a harvest. You end up harvesting bad fruit. Mm. Fruit that is detrimental to your future. Fruit that will not take you to the place that you were supposed to be because you didn't. What's that word you said earlier? Have the right perspective on what was taking place. So what is the danger that you found in your life of not having the right perspective? Because I know it's some negative Nancy's listening to us right mm -hmm. now. Hmm. <laughs> it just led me in deep, um, feeling sorry for myself, trying to mm. have a pity party, trying to sit in and trying to blame other people. But like everything that you do, it starts with you. And mm. you have to sit and like reflect like, OK, what am I putting out? What seeds am I putting out? Like you said, like what it all starts within and then within everything projects. And so like. Just. Just sitting, just sitting in petty, I mean, so, yeah, sitting in petty, sitting in pityness and just like blaming everybody and not figuring out, oh, they the problem. That's the problem. No, I am the problem. Mm. So we have to be willing to sit and sometimes say, I am the problem. Definitely. Yeah. I have to do it. <laughs> live in it. I have to do it and so many live times. It. So many mm. times. I'm like, God, why is this? Why does this keep happening? Like I keep going in circles, keep going in circles. I'm thinking this is the problem, then God removed this and it's still happening. I'm like, okay, God, you removed it and it's happening again. Something, if if everybody else is leaving, I'm not. I need to look within. Is it what's in me? What's in my heart? What's in my habit? What's in my thought pattern that is hindering me from fully stepping into what you have called me to be or to do it or just to show up? Yeah, no, that's real. And so one of the keys to figuring out whether or not you may be the source of your problem is for you to unpack whether or not you're in a cycle, yeah. whether or not you keep going to the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and literally God began, I don't know if it was, I don't know if I was sleeping, trying to wake up because let's be honest. If we got you, because y'all know I yes. keep it real here. It takes me about an hour to wake up, about an hour, right? And the people say you shouldn't snooze. I'm not there yet. That's why I got the alarm for 7.30 if I need to get up at 8.30. Got the alarm for 8.30 if I need to get up at 9.30, right? Yes. Planned out. So in one of these moments, I started to think about how the Bible really identifies the issue for everything that we go and we pray about that we, mm. some of us even beg God about. So God, like, you know, my finances ain't blah, 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 blah. You have a stewardship problem. Mm. God, you know, um, my health is X, Y, Z. You might have a self-control and a discipline problem. Mm. It's right there. It, like the things that God has commanded us, he's given us the wealth and the power to fix if we live in the true identity that God has given to us, you know, like I have a, a relationship problem. No, you probably have a discernment problem. Mm. And so if you do not really go in and lean into like, OK, I see this happening. What is the spiritual back end that I'm probably missing? What is the spiritual muscle that I am not exercising that's causing this to show up as a result in my life? God, I'm not getting any customers. Have you gone to him for his strategy for the mm. people he wants you to impact? So that's many good. times, like I had somebody come to me and I was like, you just been pitching to the wrong people. Mm. 
So now you two it's two years. I ain't made no money. I mean, I'm giving the stuff away for free because you keep going to people who want stuff for free. Mm. Most people who want to change have to understand that it takes hard work and investments. Definitely. Hard work and investments. It's yeah. that thing that's going to push you into the next level and get you out of the, the rut and the detriment that you are in. So you 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 kind of mentioned that you had a really hard year at some point. And yeah. You know, you re- recognize that you were the problem, but how did you get to the place where you're like, a year later, I'm living in my God fearing identity? <laughs> Girl, that must have took you back that. that. <laughs> that was, that's a good one. That, that is really a deep one. I guess is when I start seeing my hard prayers being answered of when mm. I was asking God to really um, reveal the thing that's in me so I can fix it with your word and with your help. And then he put me in situations where I could see that you, you remember all that praying and that fasting and the crying on the floor and being in the closet, everything like you're, you're living in it. So as I continue to just kept saying those bold prayers and everything, it's just like, wow, hold on, Lord, this kind of looking like, the stuff that you were showing me that I needed to work on, and I came to you to work on it. Now it's like, oh, hold on, this look, this territory look kind of new. Where we at? Because I, <laughs> I'm just like, this is hold on. And when I just start seeing myself show up different and bolder and more confident in God and really standing on His word and putting it to action in my life, I'm just like, wow. And then as I really just continue to go to God, sit at his feet, seek him earnestly, just really seek him and just Lord, just give me signs that I'm, I am where you want me to be at, that I am in the right place. And as he did that, and he just showed me like, literally everything you pray for, everything I said to you, it is coming to pass. It is here. I need you to open your eyes. Don't look back. Don't look to on the side. You just seek me and keep going. And you hear, and then every everything that I pray for is here. And I'm just like, God, thank you. Thank you, because where I was at of uh, 2022, God told me to quit my job in December, going into 20, no, 2023, quit my job in December of 2022 to fully seek him. Because it was so much gunk inside of me from, my childhood dealing with mental illness for 11 years and just growing up to that because I'm only 20. So it's like 6 to 17 going up. That's my whole childhood, my everything. So I had to really unlearn that. And it took a lot, but by the grace of God, he is a healer. (laughs) He is a redeemer. And when you continue to seek him and seek him and seek him and know that his word is living in you, and you pray those scriptures, you pray, and you put the word back to him because his word don't come back void. So you know, it's bound to change. You just have to want it. Like you say, hard work and investment. Hard work and investment is key to get to where you want to be. No, um, I, I want to lean into the fact that, like, I have a lot of people who age range varies. And so... For Bianca to be laying out this blueprint, in a sense, for how she's experiencing wealth um, at 20, how she's walking in the power of her identity at 20, it's because she was willing to abandon what she thought was right um, and to truly, as they say, stand on business right now. (laughs) Heavy on it. And what standing on business really means is like she knows her source and her source is God. And when he she's not in his face seeking him, she is then able to go back to his word. And as she's going into his word, she's able to learn things that's causing her then to detox what she learned throughout her childhood, what she learned um, by, you know, just being educated in whatever education systems that she was in so that then she could latch on 
to who God says she really is. And so after she started to immerse herself in that process, then she got to the place where she knew it or she wrote it down and she just repeated it back to God. And as she repeated it back to God, he repeated it back into the earth. Ah, Amen. come on, come on, Amen. come on. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you are waiting. <laughs> Some of you are waiting on a word. Some of you are waiting on an experience. Some of you are waiting on something, an encounter. Just God, give me something. And he's like, I have. You just haven't mm. went to find it. I have. Okay. You didn't seek for it. I have. You didn't not. I have. You didn't go after it. And so because you have not, I mm. cannot. Come and on. so somebody right now, you need to commit to getting up and deciding that your future is worth it. It may be hard. It may be uncomfortable. It may not be easy, but that is the work that is required for you to become you. I don't care if you're 80 years old listening to this. I don't care if you're 65 years old listening to this. Get up, do something now. Yeah. He's called yeah. you to more. I don't know what else to say. I think <laughs> that little mini tangent right there might have, yeah, you know. It. it was it. It's, and what really keeps me going and like through the hard times and when I'm struggling, I want to give up and everything. I just think about my children, children, because mm -hmm. me personally, I don't want them to go through what I went through. I know that I can stand in the gap and I can be the one that God uses. So, reconciliation can happen with my family and that my children, children, children know God. They know his love. They know what, what it means to have a covenant with him. And when you believe and stand on the word, I want them to experience the promised land. I want them to already be born into it. Like this is God. And we want to praise God every day because none of this wouldn't happen without him, without his source, without his covering, without the blood of Jesus. Like, just knowing that the people that's connected to me, the people that's connected to me, everything I went through, God is going to use that. So I want to see why would I give up now when God already gave me some of his resume of who he is? Why not go to the fullest of it? Why not see what my trauma, what things I went through, how I can help somebody else because God had turned around for his glory? Because he going to do just that. Wait on them and you're going to see. Believe it and you're going to see it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> ah, somebody should be writing down right now. Wait on them and you're going to see. Wait on them and you're going to see. But see. I'll add into that. Your posture while waiting determines your length of wait. Ooh. Because... You know, sometimes people tell the stories of the Bible and reiterate some of the experiences of the Bible. But when we really look at the children of Israel, mm. they suffered from an identity crisis. Mm, yeah. And a failure to believe. And Despite God's attempts to convince them that mm. he's their God, they would rather go in the circumstances of the day-to-day -day and allow that to be their God. Yeah. And so now and Coming back to circumstances to be our God. We can't allow fact to be um, idols in our lives. Yeah. We have to really stand on business, stand on it's, the word, stand on the sources, on the source, which is provided by the resource of Bible. What were you about to say, Bianca? Um, that's, that's <laughs> when you say they idolize the things 
that's something I had to go through because when God revealed to me my purpose and what I'm supposed to be doing, I started idolizing that. I thought that was my purpose. I thought that was everything. And if I'm not doing that, who am I? So many people go through this world thinking that their gifts and what they're called to do, if they're a basketball player, if they're a speaker, everything, they think that is their identity. And once that is taken away or you can't do that anymore, they're lost, they're confused, they feel rejected, they feel like their whole world is over. Because I felt the same way. I'm like, God, if I'm not doing this, what am I doing? But God is like, no, that's just something I gave you. You, you are a child of God. Like, you are fearfully and wonderfully made that I love you, that I sent my son for you. That if you're not doing those things, you need to be giving me glory. You need to be doing something to uplift the kingdom. Yes, this is a part of it, but that's not who you are. And so once you start to idolize that, once once I start to idolize that, God separated that from me. Before I could even do the business that I have now, God had to take it away just to show me that, no, this is not you. This is what I gave. This is what I birthed to you, but this is not you. You will have a whole nother identity besides that. And I had to learn that separately from the calling and the ministry and the school and everything. I had to separate that. And when I when God did that, I was so thankful because I really thought that was my world. I thought, if I ain't doing that, what, what am I living for? And it's just like, God was like, my love, that's not it. You're living because I sent my son for you. So you won't be a slave to sin. That you can live this world freely and joyful and just, you know, be in community. That this is just, that's not you. It's you, but it's not you. It's just something I gave to you. It was a gift. Because if that gift taken away, then uh, what am I supposed to be doing? Praising the Lord? And (laughs) it's... It was a lot because it took like a a reality check because God was showing me, you are putting this above me. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to put that above you because I feel like I went through a season where God, I felt God literally take himself away. But I know he was there, but I felt like I felt he was gone because I was idolizing something besides I wasn't I was idolized something and I wasn't giving him the glory and putting him first. And it, it changed me. That's why I'm like, I don't even play, boy. I got to put God first. That second, you know, I make sure I'm locked in with the Lord. And not because I feel like I have to, because I want to. Because I love seeking him. I love reading his word. I love feeling him, his presence. Because his presence alone, breakthrough happened. Freedom happened. So it's just like, baby, hi. Thank you for the gift. But Lord, I love you. And that's what people really have to get at is like, love the Lord, seek the Lord. Everything else is going to be provided and everything, but go to God. He is the source. He is where your identity lies in. Not the stuff he has given you, but him alone. Him alone. I think that's where we're going to wrap this thing (laughs) up at. Him alone. It's him him alone. alone. And when you fall in love with him, um, he'll start to pour into you things that you didn't even know were possible about you, your life, your future, your family, um, his goals for you. Um, I got this from a woman of God, and she says she wakes up every day thinking how she can uh, please God and what is it that he wants to do through her each and every day. And since I've developed that practice, I remember the first few times something happened out of the norm. I was like, uh, what is all of this stuff happening? But it was like, oh, this is the manifestation of the prayer. Like, I need you to show up in places. I need you to do things that you weren't accustomed to doing because that is my will. That is my wish. That is my assignment for you Hello. for today. And so once we get out of our own heads and we get out of our own way, we are able to, uh, you know, really lean into the wealth and power of identity. And our identity flows from our source, which is our father. For many of you all, go ahead and connect with Coach Bianca on her website at thebeautyandfaith.com. Some of y'all might be like, well, she too young to be talking to me. The young. (laughs) 
the old, the young shall be the old, because you know you got some gems, you know you got a blueprint even here today. And for those of you all that are trying to have financial freedom in a way and you feel called to entrepreneurship, you want to make sure that you're connecting with me at IamInMore.com, where I not only can help you start and grow your business the right way so that you don't have to spend thousands later <laughs> because you did it the wrong way. Um, I also help to protect that business through trademarks, copyrights, and contracts so that you can solidify the millions that flow from your mind. Stop sure. giving away your greatest assets and your greatest resources mm -hmm. and stop doing shady business, y'all. Stop it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In another episode where you are here to become more, believe more, so that you can be more. See you I want to say everyone. one more thing. Oh, what is it? <laughs> I want to say your obedience is connected to your destiny. That the thing that God is telling you to do, you have to do, or you won't reap the things that He's telling you to do it for a reason. He needs you to step out because your obedience is connected to somebody else's prayer. Like, just obey God, y'all. It can be challenging, but if you really want to step into it, he has called you to be and step into that promised land and that will, you have to obey him. That's only how you're really going to see the fullness of his hand. He's telling you to move, so do it. Do it scared. Do it when you got shaking in the knees, but stand up and stand on his business and stand on his power that is given through Christ Jesus, period. Period. So maybe that was somebody was on the fence about their entrepreneurship journey. I believe and she just told you to stand on it. Somebody was on the fence on about whether they should move. She just told you to stand on it. Somebody was on the fence about something, but hey, stand on it. Let's be more y'all. See you soon.